because I really liked the part of your book where you were describing um, conditions at some of the Amazon.com warehouses. It was a local news report uh, uh, about this Amazon warehouse huh. where the workers were saying, you know, please let us open the warehouse doors to get fresh air in here because we're dying of the heat. It was well over 100 inside the warehouse. And Amazon, instead of opening the doors because they were afraid of theft, they simply parked an ambulance outside waiting for people to die of heat stroke and then sent them to the ER to, to revive them. Typically what happens in Amazon work uh, uh, warehouse, they're driven to an insane pace. There's a very high rate of injury. And they're told that if they actually report the injury as a workplace injury, they'll be fired. So they stay silent. Mm -hmm. So you have you know, work that's not only grueling, but downright dangerous for the workers. Uh, and Amazon's getting away with it because for them, it's all about low, low prices. Yeah. And, and so workers really need an organized collective way to change, alter the conditions of work to something that's at a human pace. What about unions? What about yes. unions? What do yes. you think? So unions, <laughs> unions are another way to go. Under American law, though, what we've discovered is that the way to organize a union makes it almost impossible. Uh, employers can interfere with elections. And even though it's illegal for them to threaten to shut down the firm if the workers unionize, those threats happen all the time and there's very little way for workers to fight back. It's also illegal to fire people who are organizing workers at a firm, but we know it happens all the time. Sure, mm. yeah. Uh, but also because in the American scene, each shop floor has to be organized independently. You have this overwhelming cost of organization because it has to be done mm -hmm. piece by piece. Mm -hmm. So there's no way to organize, say, all of Walmart all at once. Mm -hmm. No, you have to run a separate election in each little place. And we know what happens. Occasionally, a union has organized one tiny section of a Walmart store, and immediately the response is they just shut it down, mm. that section. Mm -hmm. So in effect, it's just impossible. The fragmentation of the workplace, uh, uh, the fact that the American firm is, you know, Walmart's actually an exception. Most firms have been shrinking in size. And in terms of the number of formal employees it has, more and more corporations are just outsourcing employment to temp agencies. So they pretend, oh, there are people coming to work. But in fact, they're not le even legally employees. They're just sort of, there's an intermediary con you know, entity yeah, that's right. that is hiring these people and sending them in, uh, right? And that entity, of course, is competing with other entities to get their workers placed. Mm -hmm. And so they're getting squeezed. And the, the places where the power and money are, well, they have almost no employees, very few. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the prospects for, for labor unions under American labor law are, are quite dim. And that's why we've seen a steady decline. Peak of American labor unions happened shortly after World War II and is about I think 38% of workers were unionized. It went steady, subtly downhill since then. And now in the private sector, it's about a little bit more than 6%. Yeah. So this is a very different question. I was really curious if you're an Amazon Prime member and or if you sell your books on Amazon and how you deal with this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look, um, no, I'm not an Amazon Prime member. I won't go, uh -huh. I won't go that far, uh, but look, you know, you publish books and they have to put them on Amazon because they're a practical monopsony. But yeah. I'm also like a very high volume consumer of books. And back yeah. in the day, of course, living That's in Ann Arbor, <laughs> you know, we actually had Borders was founded in Ann Arbor. And when I first arrived at the University of Michigan in the late 80s, Borders was a fantastic academic bookstore. You can't believe it had amazing titles. It had an incredible collection. But then over time, it expanded and it built hundreds of brick and mortar stores. And then the financial collapse just wiped them out. But also, they just had no answer to Amazon because Amazon just had every book in publication, essentially. Yeah. 
right? The list is incredible. And from an acad from an academic's point of view, you want all these obscure books. And maybe the print run was only a thousand copies, but you could always find it on Amazon, right? right. <laughs> Do you use the express shipping option? You're saying it's okay to use Amazon on a very low shipping cycle on the notion that workers won't be exploited if they ship your books slowly. Why not? Well, I'm, that seems like a reasonable view one could have, maybe. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm just trying to work out my own uh, prime preferences here. <laughs> see, see, the thing is, is that I, I love my Kindle. That, oh, yeah. If I get some books on this little device here, um, and I love ebooks. But you can see these stacks of books here hey. in my office. I mean, they, I, I'm overwhelmed with 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 physical books, and I have I have so many physical books that I have to double shelve them. And then I realize I can't find books that I know I own because you'd have to look behind hundreds <laughs> of books. And so that's what drove me to eBooks. Cause I, and then I always know where my eBook is. It's in this little device here, mm -hmm, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and the publishers, I think made a grave error. They thought, oh, eBooks, that's nothing. We'll just let Amazon take care of it. In fact, they lost a huge revenue stream I have well over a hundred books on my Kindle and I always know where it is. It's just amazingly convenient. Yeah. Well, there wasn't a warehouse worker that was like getting her right. e for her. It was yeah, that's right. I'm not exploiting a warehouse worker when that's I right. get yeah. it. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you think is the role of the consumer generally in trying to bring about better working conditions? Is that, is it something when I'm a consumer, should I think about which restaurant I should go to? Oh, absolutely. Go you must, you must. This is super important. So uh, my husband and I, we went to this one restaurant, a Chinese restaurant in town uh, uh, for years. And then uh, the, uh, they were subject to investigation because they had been practicing wage theft. Mm -hmm. They had been underpaying their workers. So we stopped, no way, we're not gonna go. And we told the proprietor, we are not going to go to this restaurant because you've been stealing the wages of your workers, period. We're not going here anymore. Shortly thereafter, they went bankrupt. Because mm, mm. other, I mean, everybody heard about it in Ann Arbor and they said, forget about this. We're not going to go to this restaurant. So they ended up having to sell, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then new people took over and they're paying their workers. So yes, uh, absolutely. We should be doing this. Consumers play a role. And in fact, Amazon listens to consumers in a way that they don't listen to workers. 